welcome to my channel. It's Book Talk with Brianka J. And today we're going to talk about stream of consciousness using Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. So, readers, stick around. Let's see what happens. Mrs. Dalloway is by Virginia Woolf, and it explores the literary device of stream of consciousness. Now, stream of consciousness um, is used in fictional representations, and it helps us to understand a character by doing these leaps and bounds through time. Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway is a highly praised novel, most noted for its use of modern technique, uh, stream of consciousness. She's considered like the mother of this trend. Uh, the literary devices in which the writer writes in a way that parallels a character's internal thoughts. Uh, the style seeks to incorporate the natural movement of thoughts and feelings that occur in the minds of individuals at any given time. Wolf's use of this technique allows her to slip within space of time, producing a novel that spans over one day but captures the thoughts and feelings of a lifetime. Wolf reveals the thoughts and reflections of several, char several characters struggling to cope with the effects of middle age, lost love, and World War I. One example of Wolf's use of technique takes form in the beginning of the work. Clarissa Dalloway, the novel's protagonist, is sent backward into time when she hears the familiar squeaking of hinges. The text says, with a little squeak of the hinges, which she could hear now, she had burst open the French windows and plunge at the burden into the open air how fresh how calm stiller than this of course the air was in the early morning like the flap of a wave the kiss of a wave chill and sharp and yet for a girl of 18 as then she was solemn feeling as she did standing there at the open window and the present tense of the novel She's a middle-aged woman preparing to host a party. However, at the sound of the hinges, she is plunged into her 18-year-old consciousness. Uh, and the passage exemplifies the way stream of consciousness works to mimic the character's thought process, exempt from time barriers. Clarissa's internal monologue is provoked by an outside stimulus that carries her back into adolescence. A similar action occurs as Clarissa works to mend a gown. The text says... Drawing the silk smoothly to a gentle pause, collected the green fold together and attached them very lightly to the belt. So on a summer day, waves collect, overbalance, and fall, collect and fall, and the whole world seems to be saying, that is all. More and more ponderously, until even the heart and the body, which lies in the sun on the beach, says, too, that is all. Fear no more, says the heart. In one moment, Clarissa is actively hemming a gown. In the next, she is reminiscing the waves on the beach. Similar to the human mind, Wolf utilizes fragmentation to loosely relate the character's act into her internalized thoughts. Wolf's use of stream of consciousness allows the character to freely reflect her feelings, expanding or refracting the events of her life as she sees fit. Outside of Wolf's protagonist, Clarissa Dalloway, there are many events that shape the subtle action of the novel as well. While very little takes place in real time, it is the character's mental time leaps that provide much of the novel's depth. For instance, Peter Walsh. Clarissa's former suitor arrives from India. Peter Walsh stops to visit Clarissa upon his return. And while ordinarily readers will view the event as nothing more than a friend visiting a friend, it is Wolf's use of stream of consciousness that helps reflect to the reader the inner turmoil Peter Walsh experiences at their union. From his flashback into time, we find out that he was rejected by Clarissa Dalloway when he originally proposed to her years ago. And the text says, it almost broke my heart too, he thought. And he was overcome with his own grief, which rose like a moon looked from a terrace ghastly beautiful with light from the sunken day. I was more unhappy than I have ever been. Since, he thought, 
And as if in the truth, he was sitting there on the terrace. He edged a little towards Clarissa, put his hand out, raised it, let it fall. There above them it hung, that moon. She, too, seemed to be sitting with him on the terrace in the moonlight. This passage that allowed the reader to witness Walsh's inner thoughts adds depth to his character and reveals the true nature of the relationship he shares with Clarissa, which is not just a silent friendship, but actually a bit of unrequited love. Taking us a little far, this drama. Also in England, but living a very different lifestyle, is Semmis Smith, the war hero who suffers from what modern readers may identify as PTSD. The character is troubled and is plagued with thoughts of suicide throughout the work. All of his friends, family, and medical staff believe him to be crazy. But he too is better understood from Wolf's commitment to this literary device, which is stream of consciousness. Wolf's decision to enter the mind of set myths allows readers to understand the many issues that cause such intense reactions in, in, in individuals who experience a similar life to him. Much like Clarissa's reaction to the squeak of a hen, Semmis is also reflected by outside stimulus like the screech of tires, which caused him to suffer a panic attack. His reaction expressed by means of interior monologue, and there the motor car stood, was drawn blind and upon them a curious pattern like a tree, Semmis thought, and this gradual drawing together of everything to one center before his eyes as if some horror had come almost to the surface and was about to burst into frames, terrified him. It is I who am blocking the way, he thought. Was he not being looked at and pointed at? Was he not weighed there, rooted to the pavement for a purpose? But for what purpose? This illustrates the confusion that Seth Smith is experiencing as he attempts to readjust to life in the city after returning from a war-riddled area. A stream of consciousness as used in Mrs. Dalloway, adds depth and complexity to a novel that only extends itself into one day of life. Yet, by relying on this modern technique, the full, full life of these characters is revealed and readers can find empathy for each of them. For instance, the technique, when applied to Clarissa, reveals the simplistic, ignorant ideal of a petty-minded English woman. When applied to Peter Walsh, reader witnesses Readers witness the lasting torture of lost love, and for Seth Smith, it reflects the state of a soldier's mind after he returns from war. Without taking readers into the depths of each of these characters' minds, much of the novel will be lost. In structuring a novel this way, complexity, depth, and empathy is found. The characters become more real individuals that readers can identify with. For reference material, I have used Virginia Woolf's Dalloway, which I accessed on the website. Um, I'll leave the description. I'll leave the link in the description box below. If you like this video and love to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.